Kids Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest. I hope everybody is having a great week so far, staying productive and healthy. All right, welcome Lydia. Binayak, Crazy Life, Natalie, good to see many of our regular students. Hopefully we'll see some members in here as well. Ah, oh, there's Ferdovs. Hope you're doing really well, Ferdovs. Welcome to our members also. Uh, students, this week we are starting with some speaking part one. Uh, we're going to practice for that really high band score. Hopefully even a band nine. Uh, I think some students think that only native speakers can get band nine in the IELTS, but that's absolutely not true, okay? There are lots and lots of non-native English speakers who get band nine around the world. Of course, not as many as other band scores, but there are many, so keep your eyes on the prize. Uh, this lesson, students, is brought to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS success, definitely check out our academic website for IELTS preparation there. And for general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of uh, materials, videos, practice exams uh, to help you. We're one of the world leaders in online IELTS preparation. Some people say that we are the world leaders. Um, in uh, online IELTS preparation. So definitely check us out there. Uh, and this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat. I'm speaking with a Canadian uh, accent, a uh, West Coast Canadian accent, Victoria, Vancouver region. Uh, that's kind of the same as San Francisco, Seattle, Los Angeles, all along the Western seaboard of North America. All right. Uh, so, uh, students, uh, if you have questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com and I will gladly help you out. Okay, I'll be uh, quick to answer your emails, usually 24 hours or less. Uh, these are our websites. This is the academic website here at aehelp.com. It's the blue background. You can click that big red button to get our IELTS premium package. And then for the general, it's the green background, and you can click that big red button to join us there. Thank you for the compliment, Tabitha. I uh, absolutely appreciate that kind of feedback, okay? All right, um, so uh, on these websites, students, because this is a speaking class, I want to show you where you can practice your speaking with other students for free, okay? So i uh, just going to darken the screen for that. So when you create a, an account, and you can do that with the paid account or with the free account when you click that green button, and then when you do that, you can log in. You'll have a My Student account. And after you log in to your My Student account, you get a tour of all of the components, of course. You have computer-based uh, practice exams. You have uh, online IELTS academic course, you have exam books, workbooks, study plans, you have lesson videos, audio CDs, and even more services. And then off to the right of your student account, you'll find this task one, task two writing service, and you'll also find the student partner speaking and the speaking interview practice services. If you click the student partner speaking, um, then it will open up a new page for you and on that new page you will find students like this uh, waiting for someone to join uh, an IELTS speaking practice with them. So we have Abdallah, Yug, and Raspreet here right now uh, waiting for somebody to link up with them and uh, start practicing their speaking and that's absolutely free, okay? So make sure to use that. And it's um, across our website, so it's the same for general as well. So if you logged into general right now at gltshelp.com, you would also see Abdallah, Yug, and Raspreet there, okay? So use that, it's absolutely free. If something's not clear, 
Again, you can send me uh, an email and I will be happy to answer your questions. All right. So uh, the website, Abdulaziz, is uh, up at the top here. I wrote the URL. Um, that's aehelp.com. Okay. So Abdulaziz, it's aehelp.com. It's academicenglishhelp.com, aehelp.com, and giltshelp.com. Okay. That's where you can go uh, to use that free IELTS student partner speaking service. And again, it's absolutely free. You can use it from the free account. Okay, uh, so students, good news. Um, so, of course, today's speaking part one for everybody. Uh, tomorrow, members, we will have a reading class with a brand new reading passage. And then we'll have listening parts one and two for everyone for some listening practice. And then, of course, more classes in the week all the way until Saturday afternoon, according to Central European time. Okay, let's get into some speaking right now. So um, IELTS speaking, okay? Stay calm, stay focused. It's really, really important, all right? Um, the simplest ways to keep calm uh, during your IELTS speaking exam, okay, I'm gonna give you a quick list here because I think for some people, the biggest danger to lose some band scores is they get too nervous uh, during their IELTS speaking interview. And when candidates get too nervous during the interview, then they tend to forget how to speak. I think when people get nervous, they forget how to speak in every language, not just in English. Even in their own language, people have difficulty uh, speaking. Okay. All right. Um, thanks, Prashant. I'll check that out later, the typo. Okay, cool. Thanks for letting me know. Um, all right. So uh, how to stay calm for your uh, speaking interview? Just a few quick starter practice here. So number one, uh, practice lots before your interview uh, so you know what to expect and so you feel prepared and of course um, many of you are doing that right now so you're already taking a good step towards that you're practicing you're becoming familiar and that's fantastic okay uh, Hisham says take a deep breath uh, one of the other really important steps is get to your like at least 30 minutes to an hour before your interview starts, okay? So going to your IELTS interview early will give you a chance to be comfortable with the surroundings, kind of see what's going on, maybe see some of the other students who are there a lot. Uh, Nazir, thank you for sharing that with us. So Nazir Saleh just says, you helped me a lot. I got eight last week, thank you. Nazir, you're super welcome, okay? Uh, Nigeman says, imagine your interviewer right, like your relatives. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get to that. Okay. So go to your exam early, um, 30 minutes. So you start to feel comfortable. Go to the washroom. Um, have a drink of water. And don't uh, drink a gallon of coffee. Okay, that's not good, students. So uh, coffee, it helps you to stay alert, but drinking a lot of coffee, for those of you who are coffee drinkers, uh, that can make you really tense and anxious, okay? So you already have enough anxiety um, going there. You don't need to um, heighten that or make it more extreme by drinking a whole bunch of coffee. And that's just for those coffee drinkers out there, okay? Uh, it doesn't help. All right, uh, num or, and when you go early, uh, an important one here is take some reading. Uh, this is a very important tip. Uh, sorry, not reading, uh, speaking questions with you and ask some other candidates that are waiting to practice, okay? Uh, this will give you courage. All right, so this is kind of an interesting one and it's a very useful and very powerful kind of strategy uh, before your speaking interview. Uh, 
uh, take um, some um, uh, speaking questions with you. Two copies, okay? So one for you, one for the other person. Uh, one copy you might be able to share, but maybe taking a couple copies, even with answers. So you can actually find some speaking scripts with answers on our website as well, okay? So you can uh, copy those out. And then um, you can uh, print those. So I highly recommend printing them and taking them to your speaking interview and then asking another candidate. So if you see someone sitting there kind of looking nervous, uh, they will actually appreciate some of them. Uh, you asking, hey, do you have 10 minutes to practice? I have some speaking scripts with me. Um, here's one. And then that will give you courage. That will make you braver as well. Okay. So uh, try to do that. All right. Okay. So take it with, that's, that's really, really good practice. And if that person says, um, no, I don't want to do that. I just want to wait for my interview. Don't worry about it. Find somebody else. Okay. And again, asking a couple people to practice a bit of speaking with you is a really good way to break that nervousness and gain some courage. Is that clear? Is that tip? Is everybody picking up on that tip? Because that's a really good one. That could, that strategy alone could easily make a difference of a half or a full band score for you. Okay. All right. So be brave, build your courage. Courage and bravery is something that we can create. It's not something that we're necessarily born with. Okay. All right. Um, number three, uh, of course is, um, imagine that, uh, the interviewer is your relative, yeah, uh, someone you for grandpa and grandma are so easy going usually, they love you, uh, visualize them, uh, they don't hear very well, so you want to speak loud and clear. Uh, we're usually very confident with grandma and grandpa. People usually have lots of confidence when they're dealing with your, uh, with their grandparents. So that's another one. Okay. So keep that in mind. Um, breathing is good. Definitely remember that the sun will, uh, shine tomorrow. Um, and another really important one for your confidence is use English on the day of your interview. Okay, that's the last one I'm going to save for now. So use English only on the day. It definitely helps to have a lot more confidence when you're already using English all day. Okay, so stay away from using any other language. Create a situation where you're um, uh, using English only. All right. Okay, students, so uh, fantastic. Keep those in mind and you will have more confidence and you will do better, okay? Um, Eric's asking a good question. So Eric's, so yeah, I'm gonna address that one because I know that happens to students. So Eric is asking, um, what if the interviewer uh, keeps interrupting me, okay? Um, and uh, I'll give you another couple other ones here, Eric, because I see these from a lot of students, these comments and concerns. So um, what if the interviewer is making So that happens, um, difference of cultures, right? Uh, different facial expressions and so on, especially if your uh, interviewer is not from the culture as you. Um, what happens if the interviewer five point seven eight? Um, sometimes students catch the interviewer writing down some numbers and they think, hey, maybe that's my band score. That's something that's not really, that's for internal notes for them. Okay, so uh, here's my answer to it. Do not worry about what the interviewer is doing. You are 
there to do a job. So get it done. Okay, focus on yourself and your communication. Okay, so even though it is a conversation, you are in an interview, pay attention to yourself. Whatever they're doing, they're doing it. Keep your confidence, keep your gameplay. Okay, it's just like in sports, don't worry too much about what the other team is doing. Pay attention to your own team, pay attention to your strategy. All right. Uh, sometimes students get way too concerned about what the interviewer is doing. The interviewer is there to do their job. They might have kids. They might have stress that day. Uh, maybe their uh, kitten died that morning. Sounds terrible, I know, but it happens. Uh, maybe somebody scratched their car. They're human. Maybe they drank too much coffee. It's not your concern, okay? Um, it's not necessarily you that's creating that situation, but for you, you have to focus and pay attention to what you are doing, okay? All right, so keep that in mind. It's a good question. So don't care about the examiner, all right? Just do your job. Okay, so let's get into it. So um, just like in a real interview, all right? Uh, I will give you feedback. I will try to catch as many comments as I can, different students for different questions as much as possible. Uh, so you get to your speaking interview, you get there early, you're speaking English all day, you can visualize me as your grandfather or your grandmother, and then eventually you get called into your interview and uh, there will be a person that will welcome you and they will say welcome to the uh, speaking part of the IELTS. Uh, I will be your interviewer for this section and it has three parts. I will record this for marking purposes. Uh, firstly, um, may I uh, ask your full name, please? So what is your full name? That's the first question they'll ask you. What is your full name? Uh, be confident, know that that question is coming and then give a nice clear answer, okay? Don't make mistakes with these first questions. Uh, just be confident. So Janil Gabani says, my first name is Janil and my surname is Gabani. Please call me by my given name, Janil. Very nice, Janil. Make sure you keep practicing that when I'm saying this, okay? Nice and fluently, all right? Okay. Uh, Sammy says, my full name is uh, Siva Sankar and my surname is Pulivathi. Please call me by my nickname, Sammy. Very nice, Sammy. Nice, fluent, nice, natural, professional introduction. Okay, you want to be a little bit on the professional side in this interview, definitely not on the casual side, okay? So don't just say something like, I'm Amanjat Kaur, call me Amanjat. It's too casual, okay? Try to be a little bit more formal and a bit more expressive, right? Amanjat Kaur says, my first name is Amanjat, my family name is Kaur, uh, please call me Aman for short. Instead of you can call me, Amanjat, say please call me, Aman. It's a bit more polite. So formal and polite, that's the best approach in the speaking uh, interview, okay? Formal, fluent, polite, okay? I'm actually gonna write that up here because I think that's an important note for everyone. Um, so keep that in mind. So your goal in the interview is to be formal, fluent, and polite, okay? That will definitely get you the highest band score. Okay, that's what they're looking for specifically. Can you do that? Can you be that in English? Can you be fluent, polite, and formal, okay? And that doesn't mean you can't use slang or idiomatic language, you can, okay? Um, you can still be formal with idiomatic language and with slang, all right? Okay, Tawinder Rahman says, I'm Tawinder Rahman, but you can call me by my surname, Sha'an. Mm, it's a little bit confusing, uh, Tawinder. Um, I'm Tawinder Rahman Sha'an. Please call me by my surname, Sha'an. Okay, that I think makes more sense. If you say I'm something, then you should give your full name, your first name or given names, as well as your surname. 
uh, if you don't give your surname, it's kind of awkward afterwards to say, call me by my surname, Sha'an. It's like, oh, okay, so you only gave me your given names first, right? So I have to make sense of it. It's not good. Okay, you want to give, me, give your full name. So if you say, I'm, then give your full name, right? I'm Andrew Peter Fredericton. Please call me Freddie for short, all right? Something like that, but give your full name. All right. Uh, Puiti says, my given name is uh, Pipi and my surname is Joseph. Please call me Pipi. All right. Puiti, interesting. Okay, so uh, again, uh, give your full name. So my given names are Thomas Andrew and my family name is uh, Smith, as you will note in my passport. Uh, please just call me Tom for short. Okay, uh, so uh, you can preempt even the uh, may I see your identification question because for sure they will ask for your identification if you brought your passport you can say as you will see in my passport they might even give a little smile for that they'll know that okay this person prepared they know what's coming next um repeat after so what is your full name my given names are thomas andrew and my family name is smith as you will know in my passport please just call me tom for short okay tom may i see your passport that will be the next question so May I see your identification? Uh, better put, you might not need your passport. You, maybe your national ID card will be accepted. In some countries, it's only the passport that's accepted, so be careful. In some countries, they will accept your national ID card as well. Okay. Uh, Tanarit says, yes, definitely. Here is my passport that I use to register for this exam. Please take a look. Might as well say that, Tanarit. You're giving it to the person. Please take a look or... Please have a look. Okay, be natural. Please have a look. Please take a look. Uh, Janiel says, yes, of course. Here's my passport that I used to register for the exam. Please have a look. Uh, students, you'll realize, of course, that I'm using some very natural speed in this uh, live lesson here. Uh, fluency is important, and uh, you definitely want to continually work on being more and more fluent. This doesn't mean that you have to speak very quickly for all of your answers. Sometimes you might slow down like what I'm doing right now so that you can think of some ideas to give better answers. And then at other times you might want to speed up a little bit so that you can show the examiner that, hey, I have this information in my mind and I can put it out there very quickly using English. So your speed in English can vary throughout your speaking depending on the questions and what you're talking about. Don't try to speak like a super fast robot all the time. That's awkward and you'll make mistakes. But definitely do show fluency when possible. Uh, some of the... Uh, places where fluency is the easiest to show are definitely in the beginning with these introductory questions and with part one. That's why you want to be confident right away because it's easier to show fluency in the very beginning than later on where the questions get more specific and more challenging. Is that clear? Did everybody pick that up? Is everybody getting what I just said there? So you don't have to speak fast all the time but you should show fluency when possible. It's easiest to show fluency in the beginning when the questions are easier, okay? So be confident right away. If you're not confident in part one, it takes you the first five minutes to get confident. It becomes more difficult to show fluency because the questions become more difficult, okay? All right, so keep that in mind. So show fluency early. All right, Kyber for that last question says, yes, certainly, please let me dig it out of my pocket. Here it is, please have a look. Yeah, if you have your ID or your uh, um, passport stuck in your wallet and you're wearing some tight jeans, you need to dig it out of your wallet and, or out of your pocket or out of your wallet and then show it to 
the examiner. If you say dig it out of my pocket or dig it out of my wallet, it's nice because you're showing idiomatic language. Oh, it says it's my pleasure. This is my ID card. I used it to register here. Please take a look. Very nice. OS. I like it. It's original. Okay. So Okay, so may I uh, see your identification again, students speak and repeat as much as possible. May I see your identification with pleasure. I just need to dig it out of my pocket. Here it is. Please take a look. I used this passport to register for the exam. Fantastic. You're doing good. Stay confident. Uh, then the examiner will likely say, okay, here's your passport back. Now for part one, I will ask you some questions on a general topic and some questions to get to know you better. Uh, where do you live? Okay, that's a common question. Make sure you can answer these questions very clearly without mistakes and again with good fluency. All right, so uh, where do you live? For this question, you should explain the city, the country, and your residence, your shelter, where you actually live, the house or the apartment. Okay, all right. Abdul Bori says, I live in a four bedroom accommodation with my parents and siblings in the capital city of Uzbekistan, Tashkent, which is one of the most spectacular and beautiful um, urban areas in the country. Abdul um, Bori, uh, accommodation is okay, but it's a bit awkward. Most native speakers or natural English, uh, you would likely say, I live in a four bedroom house, apartment, condo, duplex, townhouse. So the type of accommodation, okay? It's more specific. Use that. Irvin Roy says, I'm currently living in a small village in Donna Rosario, situated in the central part of Cebu City. I've been living there with my wife for almost two years. Irvin, very good. Uh, add a little bit more, um, your actual residence. So I'm currently living in a two-bedroom house in a small village in Dona Rosario. Okay, just that little bit more gives us um, a little bit more visualization. So it's kind of like um, uh, Google Earth, where you start with the house and then you zoom out. Of course, you don't have to say I live on planet Earth. Not yet. Maybe IELTS in 100 years. You might have to say, I live on planet Earth in the city of Tashkent. All right. Um, Jainiel says, I live in a spacious two-bedroom apartment with my family in the heart of Surat, which is the southern part of India. It's also known as the Diamond City. Jainiel, that's a really nice way to express where you live. Okay. You don't have to say um, in the heart of the city, Surat. You just say in the heart of Surat. Okay. We know it's a city when you say in the heart of. Okay, So it's good. Uh, Paya says, I live in a two-bedroom apartment on the second floor of a 16-story building with my parents in downtown Dhaka city, which is the capital of Bangladesh. Very nice. Natalie. says, I live in a Siberian city called Kemerovo in a one-bedroom apartment with my husband and my three children and say nothing of the dog. We live in uh, about a half kilometer from the Tom River in the center of the city. Uh, I would say, Natalie, okay, that's good. I would say uh, my husband and my three children, not to mention our dog, Sparky, okay? Uh, native English usually would throw it in like that, okay? Not to mention our dog, Sparky, a German shepherd, okay? All right, so um, I live in a, a three-bedroom apartment, on the outskirts 
of Victoria, which of course is the capital city of uh, British Columbia and one of the most western cities of Canada. I live here with my wonderful wife and lovely daughter. So again, uh, this kind of answer, okay, uh, repeat after me, where do you live? I live in a three bedroom apartment on the outskirts of Victoria, uh, which is of course the capital city of British Columbia and one of the most Western cities of Canada. I live here with my wonderful wife and lovely daughter. So again, what I'm doing here, students, with this answer is I'm really focusing on this style of speech. So remember that um, band nine means an expert user of English. And expert user of English, it means that you're not just fluent, it, you're not just um, uh, able to use a lot of vocabulary and grammar, but you're also able to manipulate your conversation and your communication to the context of the situation, okay? Uh, whether you're speaking to a friend uh, in a coffee shop or to your teacher in a university class or to your colleague at work or to an IELTS examiner in an IELTS exam, you're able to choose your grammar and your words and your communication in the most appropriate, most fitting way. And again, that's why I said to get those really high band scores, the IELTS is formal, fluent, and polite, okay, with a little sprinkle of casual idiomatic slang. That's what you wouldn't have in a job interview, for example, right? Okay, um, so next question. Do you have brothers or sisters, right? It's kind of a nice icebreaker question, ask about family. Uh, do you have any brothers or sisters? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Again, students, I will try to catch different students at different times. So uh, just keep writing, all right? Uh, Kevin Bowie says, yes, I have a little brother who is about to enter university. Uh, he's of medium height, around five foot five, slim and very humorous. As a matter of fact, when I was studying for the IELTS and I felt stressed, he always came up with jokes to help me feel a bit more relaxed. Very nice, Kevin, and stop there, right? If you keep talking, it will become over-speaking and off-topic, but that's just right. You've literally filled the cup right to the rim uh, with the amount of information needed to get that nice high band score. So you explain that you do have a little brother, and you give us a little bit about his appearance and personality, and that really sends a clear message to the person who's asking about your siblings, right? Very good. Okay, uh, students, if you find that I'm speaking a bit fast or some of the vocabulary that I use is complex, don't worry about it. I'm pushing you to be your best. Remember, this video is recorded and you will be able to review it and uh, uh, practice more after. It's on the channel, okay, about an hour after we're done. Uh, so uh, just keep pushing. Uh, if you only get about 60, 70% of what's going on, that's totally fine, all right? Roshni Kunte says, yes, I have a younger brother. His name is Sandy. Right now he is uh, in his 30s and he's medium built. And also he's an optimistic person. I mean to say that he never loses hope um, building his business. Very good, Roshni. I would probably throw in what kind of business just for fun. So um, his restaurant business, okay? Um, but otherwise, good. Again, very sim synonymous with Kevin Bowie, Roshni. That was good. Uh, so you gave some information, a little bit about the appearance and um, a little bit about his personality. That's great, okay? Especially if you're, you, know, you only have one sibling, it's worth doing that, okay? All right, Carolina is asking, what can I do so that these answers don't sound memorized? <laughs> okay, uh, Carolina, uh, so they won't sound memorized because the questions 
will be original. So here you're really just practicing and you're picking up a lot of different ways to express yourself. That's why I keep saying, Carolina, that every time you answer the questions like, what's your name or where do you live? Always try to answer differently. Uh, remember, Carolina, at the end of the day, all communication that we speak, whether in English or in our own language, is memorized. We learned it, we remembered it, we memorized it at some point. Um, not sounding memorized it simply means that you use it often so that you can be dynamic when you're using it, okay? So you can be dynamic. You definitely don't want to sound like you're just a record player that's pushing the play button and replaying, okay? So absolutely. Some of our speaking videos, Carolina, on our channel, you might find that the people who are speaking, they sound like they're speaking memorized answers, and that's because somewhat they are, but those are different because they were just showing you the level of speaking uh, that's needed for those band scores. So those students had time to review and work on those answers. But when you go in there, you definitely want to sound as natural as possible, okay? All right, one more. Uh, Raju says, I live in a really spacious and uh, quiet three-bedroom apartment on the second floor of a seven-story building in the capital of Nepal, Kathmandu. Very good, Raju. That was for the previous question. So do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have two brothers, one younger and one older. My younger brother, Mario, is a successful uh, software programmer, while my older brother, Raphael, is a puncturist. I love them both very much. And we stay in touch each week. All right. So that is my answer. And that's actually true. You've just learned a little bit more about me. Um, so I do have two brothers. And they're quite close in age as well. Uh, so repeat after me. Do you have brothers or sisters? Yes, I have two brothers, one younger and one older. My younger brother is Mario. He is a successful software programmer, while my older brother, Raphael, is an acupuncturist. I love them both very much, and we stay in touch each week. All right. Um, and if you don't have brothers or sisters, the vocabulary that you might be looking for is, no, I'm an only child. And I didn't, or I don't mind this much at all because I get all the love and attention from my parents. Okay, so uh, that would be an alternative if you don't have brothers or sisters, okay? So again, lots of different ways to answer this question. And you want to practice saying these kinds of questions in different ways, okay? All right. So uh, you've made your way through these uh, introductory icebreaker questions. You're feeling good. You're expressing your fluency. Um, and uh, now you move on to uh, part one. And in part one... Um, the examiner will say, okay, uh, let's talk about work and play. And yeah, you can make up information. So students, you don't have to tell the truth. You can make up information. Uh, but for the icebreakers, they should be, you know, truthful answers. They're usually questions where uh, the truth is easier. All right. Um, so Part one, let's talk about work and play. Uh, in IELTS these days, um, these kinds of two-sided topics are really popular, like work and play, or uh, pencil and computer, or uh, dessert and soup. Okay, so these kinds of two-part task one or two-topic task ones are fairly popular these days, so don't be surprised if you get something like this. And then the first question is, how often do you work? Okay, something simple, adverb of frequency, always, 
often, sometimes, usually, rarely, never. Okay, they're looking for this kind of simpler English. Adverbs of frequency. All right. Okay, so Alex Joseph says, I work as a bank clerk, although I'm not passionate about my job. I like my day-to-day -day work because I'm the sole breadwinner in my family. This uh, makes me work um, harder than usual. Uh, Alex, you haven't answered the question. I don't know if you uh, said something before, but this is how often do you work? How often do you work isn't really where do you work. So um, make sure that you're answering the question. Otherwise, you're going to lose band scores. Okay, uh, Students answering off topic. And this is why you definitely don't want to just memorize answers. Uh, if you're answering off topic, you will lose band scores. Okay, you will lose band scores. No question about it. All right. Uh, Comment Preet says, well, I have recently completed my 12th grade with um, NON Medical, so I'm still a student. I don't work. Um, okay, Kumal, uh, that's not bad. Um, I would answer more directly. So I would say I don't work yet because I'm still completing my studies or I've just completed my studies and I haven't yet found a job, okay? So answer the question directly, students, as directly as possible, all right? Kyber says, well, I work 10 hours each day, six times a week as I work as a manager at John United Bank in Kabul, and uh, I have a lot of duties managing that bank. Okay, good Kyber. So you're using some quantitative language. Students, you want to start qualitative and then shift to quantitative. So I the time. All right, so um, again, quantitative to qualitative, okay? Uh, here we go, repeat after me. How often do you work? I work all the time, often burning the midnight oil. So this is qualitative, this is quality, okay? It's colorful, it's subjective, but it's not completely clear. So what is all the time? Um, I say 10 to 12 hours, six to seven days, some people work 12 to 16 hours, seven days a week. So for them, all the time is even more, right? Um, so this is my quantitative. This is where I'm using numbers. This is where I'm clearly explaining to my listener, okay? So again, uh, I'm showing this fluent, formal, and polite language. And one way to do that is by going from qualitative to quantitative, making that shift, okay? So I work all the time, often burning the midnight oil. I would say I work about 10 to 12 hours each day and six to seven days a week. I'm very passionate about my business, which focuses on helping people achieve their dreams by passing the IELTS exam. So within that, hopefully the examiner has picked up that I run a company, okay? All right. Then comes the next question. Here we go. So no surprise switching from work to play. Work to play, right? That was the introduction. Let's talk about work and play. So next question is, how much time do you have to play? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So how much time do you have to play? All right. So Pachuya Dub says, these days 
I hardly have time to play because of my hectic work schedule. However, I used to play badminton at least once a day in the evening with my friends. Okay, Pachu, uh, that's kind of jumping into the past. It's a little bit off topic for the last sentence. Try to keep on topic. So don't jump to the past students with your answers if you're not being asked about the past. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nigeman says, well, after finishing my assignments, I usually spend about 30 to 45 minutes either playing video games with my brother or chilling out playing my piano. Yesterday, I played a song called Ed Sheeran. All right. Let's keep going. Stone Soul 420 <laughs> says, due to my hectic work schedule, I'm not able to play. Usually I play uh, in my spare time. Uh, monotonous time, a Stone Soul, doesn't really make sense. All right. Um, funny name, though, I have to say. All right. Uh, Lydia says, well, I'm not fond of playing video games or having some fun with children. Importantly, 2020 is my senior year. Therefore, I have no time to hang out either with my lovely family or friends. I have to study intensively for at least six hours a day to get a scholarship and to achieve my potential goals. Um, <clears throat> Lydia, that doesn't really answer the question. So I'm guessing what you mean is that you rarely play uh, maybe an hour a week or an hour a month uh, where you would consider that you're playing a game. But again, you have to answer the question directly, students. Okay, so... Um, don't necessarily answer the question from your own wishes or desires of what you want to express, but explain or answer in such a way as what you need to express. Did everybody catch that? That's a really important point as well, and I'm going to make a note of that for everybody right now, okay? So uh, this is really, really important, okay? So... Uh, do not answer what you want to say, okay? But answer what you need to say. Um, okay, so what I mean by that, I'll give you another example of that here in simple form is, don't say something like, um, I don't like playing, I'm always studying, I'm always working. Okay, because it's kind of like, well, you haven't really answered my question. You've just very strongly expressed that you're always working and you're always studying. And in a casual, informal conversation, that might be okay because then I can follow up and then we can kind of get into it a bit more. But in a more formal situation with a stranger, like an IELTS examiner or in a job interview, you need to answer the question that you're being asked, not giving the answer that you want to necessarily say. Okay, so uh, this question is very specific. How much time do you have to play? So I have very little time uh, during the week to relax and play, um, whether uh, sports or video games. I would say... I spend uh, no more than four to five hours playing, uh, usually on the weekend when I may have a bit of uh, spare time for uh, a game of uh, football or uh, 30 minutes of uh, PUBG, which is a video game, okay? Let's be clear on that. Okay, so that would be answering the question directly, right? That would be answering the question directly. So how much time do you have to play? I have very little time during the week to relax and play, whether sports or video games. I would say I spend no more than four to five hours playing, usually on the weekend when I may have a bit of spare time 
for a game of football or 30 minutes of PUBG, a video game. Okay, I don't actually play PUBG, but I know a lot of people in India do, so I thought I'd throw that in. Um, so that's what you want to do, answer directly. In a job interview, uh, by the way, a uh, little side note, anecdote, uh, that's often what separates a successful candidate from a non or not successful candidate in a job interview is a person who answers the questions of the interviewer directly because someone uh, in the office or in the workplace who has clear line of communication is a very valuable employee. Someone who always expresses their feelings and their own ideas can be a very difficult employee. <laughs> okay, so, um, so keep that in mind, okay, when you're in a job interview. There's a lot of training videos for job interviews, but that's probably the one best advice that I can give you, all right? Uh, Haman Jassar is asking, what's the meaning of four to five hours? Um, when you use this expression in English, no more than four to five hours, it's kind of like saying approximately four hours or roughly four hours. Okay? So it's somewhere between that amount of time. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Crowbald says, it's important to note, though, that sometimes it's important not to answer the question. This is clearly seen by politicians. Crowbald, that's good advice for politicians. Absolutely. So politicians and lawyers, that's a different context. In the IELTS exam, it's a different context. Students, a politician would probably not get a very good band score in the IELTS exam if they kept avoiding the answer and going off topic. Okay, so uh, Crowbald... When you're a politician or if you're a lawyer or in some other situations, then yes, but not on the aisles. And the aisles, I don't think politically correct or politi politically avoidant answers would do very well. <laughs> All right. But otherwise, it's a, it's a nice, uh, nice kind of side note. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, so uh, here we go. Next question, everyone. Let's keep rocking and rolling here a bit. Uh, do you like your work? Why or why not? Give me a nice answer here. So do you like your work? Why or why not? Why or why not is in brackets because they might not ask you that right away. If you give the answer, if you give the reason, they will not ask you this. If you don't give the reason, if you just say, yeah, I like my work, then they'll say, okay, why do you like your work? Okay, so show fluency. All right. Okay, let's take a look at some answers. So, here we go. Raju says, without a doubt, I am a teacher by choice and I'm highly motivated and dedicated as such. Teaching is a noble profession and uh, I enjoy going into my workplace every day. Okay, Raju, um, maybe give a bit more. So, when you say that you're a teacher and you enjoy it because it's noble work, um, explain that a bit. So when I pass knowledge on to my students and I see them use it to succeed in life, like pass an IELTS exam, it makes me feel really good inside. So I love my work. Okay, so Raju, you a bit more there and you'll get a better band score. Okay, when you're giving explanations, students, dig deep. Dig deep. All right. Paya says, I love my work because not only am I passionate about my job in the office, which motivates me to go further in life. But also, uh, I do household chores like cleaning, which helps me to maintain. Okay, Paya, I'm not sure where you're going with that. You might want to rethink it a little bit. So your office work and your housework, they're both jobs. But if you're going to get into that kind of explanation, make sure it's very, very clear. Okay. All right, Erkin Salyev says, that's a tough question. I like my work due to, uh, for, a numerous, for a number of reasons, like having good, good colleagues, earning good money, and um, making a difference. Okay, Erkin, not bad. You have some good ideas there, but you do have some unnatural language or some less natural language there, so careful with that. Okay. Sunny Rajput says, yes, I like my job, certainly, because it not only fulfills my needs, getting paid, but also 
Um, I learned so many skills at my job. Like yesterday, I learned how to do a bit of graphic design, um, which I can now use with my family photos to make my family pictures look a lot better. Okay, Sonny, um, if you're learning so many skills at your job, give me one skill that you just learned, which makes your job fantastic, okay? So, good. Uh, Benedek, Varga, I do. I would say it's kind of good because of the time I can manage my work during the day and I have time to do my hobby. All right, uh, Benedek, um, you should say I do. Uh, I like my job because it's flexible. I can manage my work throughout the day and I have time to do my hobbies. So natural English there, we would say it's flexible. My work is flexible, which makes it really convenient to um, not be stressed and to be able to enjoy my hobbies like um, cycling, okay? All right. Okay, students, so do you like your work? Yes, I really enjoy my job. Not only because of the wonderful people I meet from around the world, but also because it is extremely gratifying to know that I'm making a difference in people's lives. Just the other day, I got a letter from a student who now lives in Australia with their family. Okay, uh, so here we go. Uh, repeat after me. Do you like your work? Why or why not? Yes, I really enjoy my job, not only because of the wonderful people I meet from around the world, but also because it is extremely gratifying to know that I'm making a difference in people's lives. Just the other day, I got a letter uh, from a student who now lives in Australia with their family. Okay, or just the other day, I got a thank you letter uh, from a student who lives in Australia with their family. Okay, uh, students, I'm going to stop there. Uh, we have a few more questions here that you can practice on your own. Again, remember, students, that you have student partners speaking, kind of like Skype or WhatsApp, in your My Student account at ahelp.com and gltshelp.com, and you can use those for free, all right? Uh, so all you need to do is create a My Student account uh, at aehelp.com. You can do that with the demo version, the free version, or the paid version, and then you can find other students to practice with, okay? All right. So uh, I hope everybody has enjoyed this lesson. I hope you've uh, picked up um, some good vocabulary, some good language. Make sure to practice and make sure to be confident in your speaking. Much love to all of you. I'll be back tomorrow uh, with some reading, so a brand new reading passage from one of our newer exams. Uh, and then uh, we'll do some listening, part one and part two practice as well tomorrow. You're very, very welcome, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Practice your speaking. English opens up a lot of doors in life, so keep pushing forward. Bye for now. I'm Adrian, signing out from Budapest.